Hello, welcome to Momentum. I'm Robert Green, your host today, and we're happy to have Dr. Leslie Strauderman join us today. Dr. Strauderman holds the International Paper Chair and is Professor of Industrial and Systems Engineering here at Mississippi State University. Dr. Strauderman, welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to have you here. So tell us, how did you end up becoming an engineer? Oh, that's a good story. So in high school, I really enjoyed math, as a lot of engineers do, but I also really loved teaching. And so I thought I was going to be a math teacher. And I even went to summer camps where they taught us about how to be a teacher. We got to develop lesson plans and everything. But then after my junior year of high school, I had this great teacher that said, you know, you're so good at math, maybe you should think about engineering. And so then I went to a summer camp for engineering, a week-long camp at a local college, and I just fell in love with it. I really enjoyed the problem-solving aspects of it. We played a lot of games to explain different types of engineering. And um, one of the games we played was we had this assembly line for paper airplanes, and each person had a different job, and it taught us about bottlenecks and production flows and a lot of things that industrial engineers do. And I was the bottleneck and I was horrified by that and tried to fix it so I wouldn't be that the next round. But that's how I was first introduced to engineering. And after that, I decided, you know, this is a career where I can use the math that I love, but I can also problem solve all day, um, maybe make a little more money than if I had gone into education. And so that's how I ended up choosing engineering to be my major in college. Okay, good. So how did you choose? It sounds like you may have been interested in industrial engineering from the beginning. Yeah. But I know a lot of our students coming in don't really have a, much of an understanding of what industrial engineering right. is and what they do. Um, so how did you come to that decision? And can you help our audience out with... Uh, maybe if they're struggling to sure, understand sure. why they need to do that. So when I went to that camp, I learned about all the different types of engineering disciplines. And they really explained to us that industrial engineers improve processes. And that seemed to just be kind of really natural for me. How do we make things more efficient? How do we make things more safe? How do we improve things? And so it really just connected with kind of who I was as a person and how I like to make things better. And um, I also learned that industrial engineers did a lot of communication and working with people, which is something I enjoy doing. And so I was actually one of those rare engineering students who started in industrial engineering and stuck with it the whole way through. Because um, a lot of our students change majors once they learn about different fields, which yeah. is perfectly fine. But once I learned about industrial engineering, I was set. Yeah, good. Well, I know you teach several courses and have won several awards for teaching and have uh, sort of one of the experts in the college, particularly when it comes to distance education. Yeah. But I know you also do some research. What, what kind of research do you do and how did you get interested in those areas? Sure. So my research area is human factors and ergonomics. So I study how people work and I try to make their work better. Um, we like to talk about designing the job to the worker, not trying to find the right worker for the job. And specifically, I look at how people use technology on the job and how we can incorporate things like wearable devices to make their jobs more user-friendly, more safe, make them more productive. And a lot of times, so, um, people might be a little bit hesitant of trying something new or trying new technology. So we do a lot of surveys and interviews and modeling to try to understand how people come to accept new technology in the workplace so that we can um, better introduce it to improve those worker outcomes. Yeah, it's a lot of interesting things going on in, in industrial engineering. So in addition to what you do for industrial engineering, I know you're also very involved in our engineering education graduate program. Yes. Tell us a little bit about the engineering education program. Yeah, so we offer a PhD concentration in engineering education. And engineering education is a field of research where we try to improve how engineers learn and how we train engineers. So we look at the whole life cycle of the engineer, what gets them interested in engineering, how we can improve their learning once they're in the classroom, how they can continue to learn once they're in the workforce. And um, our engineering education program trains PhD students to be able to go and then be better teachers at the university level, be better trainers in the corporate setting. We even have some high school teachers and community college teachers that teach those fundamental engineering classes that are in our PhD program as a way to not only improve their instruction, but to understand some of the science behind why, st why engineering students learn one way better than another or what might motivate an engineering student. So it sounds like there's some overlap between engineering and, and education. Yeah. So 
why would someone want to choose a PhD in engineering education rather than a, a doctorate or, or something in, in education? Yeah, there is a lot of overlap. So the way our program is designed is half of our courses are actually from education and half are from engineering. So when you finish our PhD program, not only do you understand the educational research and pedagogy, but you also have some of the technical skills that come from the engineering courses. Um, I also think, and you probably have seen this, that engineers are a special breed sometimes, and so how they learn and um, professional skills and their job prospects are just, a, they're unique. And so having research in a curriculum that specializes in the engineering education students or the engineering students particularly, I think can be very helpful. So what, what advice would you have for, for say an undergraduate or for that matter even a prospective uh, engineering student coming in? How, how would you recommend they go about preparing themselves to, to get into this PhD program? Oh, that's a good question. So if you're interested in doing a PhD in engineering education, the first thing that I recommend is to be a good engineer. So having the foundation in engineering is, I think, the fundamental requirement or one of the foundational requirements for studying engineering education. That way you've, you've experienced what it's like to be an engineer, you've experienced what it's like to be an engineering student, and so when you go and you start to read the academic literature about why students learn a certain way or what motivates different types of students to study engineering, you do have have that personal connection. And so I think being a good engineer is the first and foremost. Um, and then after that, just having a desire to learn, having a desire to learn about what works and what doesn't work in the classroom, about motivation and skill sets that students have, which I've already said. But um, yeah, being a good engineer and having a desire to learn are some good, good attributes for our engineering education program. I think it's important. I know some of the professors I enjoyed most, as particularly as an undergrad, were those who had some industrial experience and, and can sort true. of say, yeah, here, here's how it, really, how it really works in engineering. That's very true. It's yeah. a lot easier to learn something when we understand why we're learning it, yeah. right? And that's true in any course at any level, um, even in the workplace, when an engineer is learning a new skill, they want to know why they need that new skill. So I totally agree. Yeah. So you also hold the International Paper Endowed Chair in the department. Yeah. Um, what has that endowed chair position meant for you? How, how has it benefited you and our students? Yeah, so International Paper is a great partner for the college. And through this endowed chair position, they've provided us with resources that help with student engagement, student learning, um, student study spaces and lounges. Um, but one thing that's really nice is by having the chair title, it promotes the visibility of International Paper. And when students see that and ask about it, I'm able to tell them about you know, what a great partner they are, what a great company they are to work for, and really segue into conversations about their career plans and some of the things they should be doing to be career ready as engineers. I think it says a lot about the field of engineering too that international paper has endowed that yes. position because I think typically when you think of international paper, you might think of chemical engineers. Oh, sure. So I think this really helps stress that it's an interdisciplinary field and a lot of different majors Absolutely. are involved in it. We have a lot of alums from industrial engineering, computer science, mm -hmm. like you said, chemical yeah. engineering, working throughout their company. Okay. So I know one of the things you and I have talked about and, and both are passionate about is the lack of women in, in engineering. And we, we definitely need more. Um, and, and as we've seen, I think you would agree, women tend to actually do better in, in college they than, than some of the guys do. Yeah. Um, so, so what are your thoughts on that? What can we do? How can we get more women involved in the profession? Yeah, it's, it's a very big topic and a very big challenge that we face um, in academia and in engineering overall. I think one of the keys to this is exposure to engineering. So we need to make sure that um, as children, in high school, all throughout K-12, that both boys and girls are being exposed to STEM and to engineering specifically, and that they're being given the message that anyone can be an engineer. I think as students get older and start looking at college majors, I think we need to do a better job of explaining that engineering is a very diverse discipline with not only diverse students, but diverse career opportunities. So a lot of times, um, female students want something that is people oriented that can make the world a better place you know i was that same type of student as well and they might think that engineers just design machines and sit behind a desk all day which is not true engineers can make the world a better place they do make the world a better place each and every day and so i think we just need to um, modernize our explanation of engineering a little bit and make sure they understand that you can do those things, you can help the environment, society, the community around you through engineering. 
I think that's important. I think a lot of them just think, I, I can't do it because they mainly look around and see a lot of guys in, in the discipline. It is true, yeah. Um, but yeah, we certainly, uh, I know many women like you who have been very successful in yeah. the discipline. We just need to get to get more doing it. That's right, um, that's right. Yeah. And I think most of our students, once they are in engineering, they do find their people, they do find their place. And for our female students, sometimes it is other female students. Like we have a very active um, Society of Women Engineers chapter, mm -hmm. which helps a lot of them find connection. But you might be surprised who you connect with in college. It may not be people like you, and that's part of the growing and learning experience as well. So you're also a licensed professional engineer. I am. Um, what, why did you choose to pursue the PE license? And is that something you'd recommend uh, for students to do? Yeah, so I was given the advice when I was an engineering student to start the process of getting my engineering licensure. And so I took the FE exam when I was an undergraduate student just in case I ever wanted to be a licensed PE. And I decided to go through and get the entire license because I think it upholds the integrity of the profession. And it shows people that I work with that not only do I have the degrees that um, show my skill in engineering, but this license shows that I'm current in the field, that I'm credentialed and able to do the engineering work. And it just helps uphold the, um, the quality that we have here in the Bagley College of Engineering. Yeah, I always encourage students to take the fundamentals of engineering, the FE exam, yes. because that's the kind of knowledge you start to lose once you get out and, and start, start practicing. It is. When you're a practicing engineer, you become um, very specialized a lot of times. And so taking that first exam, when all of the breadth of engineering content is fresh in your mind, is always a good idea. Yeah. So I know that we just went through uh, our ABAT reaffirmation yeah. visit uh, back in October here, and, and you're very involved with ABAT as mm -hmm. a program evaluator as well as a, a team chair. Yeah. Uh, in a few minutes, can you tell us what, what is ABAT and why is it important? Yeah, so ABET is an organization that accredits engineering programs like the academic programs we have here at Mississippi State, and it provides a quality standard or a benchmark for what those programs should um, should try to attain. And so as a PEV and an evaluator, I'm able to go to other colleges and universities and see their engineering programs, talk to those students and those faculty, and really give them some hopefully useful feedback on what they can do to improve their programs. So ABET's goal or ABET's purpose is really just to try to improve the quality of education for all of our engineering students. And I think we do a pretty good job. Well, I want to thank you for all you do here for our students and, and research as, as well as the profession uh, and for ABAT. It's been a, been a pleasure having you today. I want to thank you all for joining us, and I want to encourage you to join us next month for another edition of Momentum.